hearts, everybody. Hallelujah. Lord bless you all. Someone asked the question, if Jesus is the king of the Jews, why do Christians follow him and Jews reject them? Well, that's a good question, and we're going to answer in this program. Uh, we're not scared to answer your tough questions, no matter what they are. Let's go straight to the question. And I wrote the answer down, and now I found it. Hold on one second. Because the Jews reject God as their king in the Old Testament. Um, 1 Samuel 8, verse 6 to 7, it says, But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Heed the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Did God stop being their king? No, he remained their king. Zephaniah 3 verse 15. The Lord has taken away your judgment. He has cast out your enemy, the king of Israel. The Lord is in your midst. You shall see disaster no more. That's Zephaniah 3 15. Just because the Jews rejected Jesus as their king doesn't mean he isn't their king. A couple examples. I don't like Biden as the president, and I refuse to receive him as my president. Is he still president? Yes, he is. Is he my president? Yes, whether I want to admit it or not, he is in the White House. The same is here. Samson was considered a judge of Israel, yet he was rejected by Israel. They they even turned him into the um, to the Philistines. They gave him away to the Philistines. We read in um, Judges um, chapter sixteen verses thirty one. The following: Then three thousand men of Judah went down to the cliff of the rock of Etam, and they said to Samson, "Do you not know that the Philistines rule over us? What is this you have done to us?" And he said to them, as they did to me, so I have done to them. And his brothers and all his family household came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between. I think I missed the verse. Okay, this is this is the passage of is in Judges. Where he was rejected, chapter 16. But I don't remember the verse. I'm reading the verse, but I don't remember where it is. But um, if you read Judges 16.31, it says, And his brothers and all his father's household came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtorah in the tomb of his father Manoah, and he had judged Israel 20 years. Notice that he judges Israel 20 years and he was rejected by Israel as their judge. They turned him in. There's even a prophecy in Isaiah telling us that, that Jesus would be despised by his own people. Isaiah 49 verse 7 says, Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One, to whom man despises, to him whom the nature of the nation to him who the nation abhors to the servant of rulers king shall see and arise princesses also shall worship because of the Lord who is faithful the holy one of Israel and he has chosen you notice Jesus here is called the one who the nation abhors what nation is he referring to the nation of Israel they abhor him there are many Jews that have come to Christ and they love Jesus, but the majority of them have rejected him. Isaiah 53 verse 3 says, He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. And he was despised, and we did not esteem him. And then Isaiah also states that the Gentiles will accept him. Isaiah 11 verse 10 says, In that day there shall be a root of Jesse, who shall stand as a banner to the people.
for the Gentiles shall seek him, and his resting place shall be glorious. Oh, the resting place that Jesus gives us is glorious. To know our sins are forgiven, it is glorious. And there will be a time when all the Jews will receive him that are alive at the time when Jesus comes. Now, let's play a song. Come while he waits for you Listen to his voice Leave with him your care And begin life anew Kneel at the cross Leave every care Kneel at the cross Jesus will meet you There is room for all who would his glory share. List their ways, harm can ne'er befall those who are anchored there. Kneel at the cross, leave every care. Kneel at the cross, Jesus will meet you there. Idols up, look under realms above. Turn not away to life sparkling up, dust only in his love. Kneel at the cross, leave every care. Kneel at the cross, Jesus will meet you. Okay, I want to explain something. Maybe if you heard the, one of the last programs, I said I was not going to put commercials, and now all suddenly there is commercials, is because I talked to the podcasters, and um, they showed me how to take the unwanted commercials out. So you shouldn't be finding in this podcast any commercial having to do with casinos, any Planned Parenthood commercials, any commercials that has to do with um, cigarettes, any commercial that has to do with beer, any commercial that has to do with wine and, and spirits or anything like that. You shouldn't be finding any of these commercials in this podcast. And if you do, please let me know. So you can let me know at revcacolides at gmail.com. And I will do my very best. Listen, I will do my very best to tell them And if they don't get rid of it, then I will completely eliminate every single commercial. But you should only find one commercial in the beginning and probably two commercials in the end of the podcast. I don't think any more commercials should be here. Anyway, so just letting you know that. um, So you know why I, I now we have commercials again. Um, someone asked the question, why didn't God in the Bible, Old Testament, reveal himself to all cultures and nat- nations? I think Paul has an answer for this in Acts Acts 17, verse 30, 31. He says, truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he would judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. In um, the man who he has ordained, he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Notice that it says, God overlooked. It was a time of ignorance. But now a fuller revelation of God is revealed through his son, Jesus Christ, in the New Testament. So God overlooked that. But even, even in that time, there were still some nations that had experience with the living God. <clears throat> Assyria had experience with the living God where they all repented um, at the preaching of Noah. 
And we also see King Nebuchadnezzar had the experience with the living God, and he also repented and came to the Lord. So even though, even though not all nations had that experience, but many of the nations did. Okay, let's go to next question. Why did I inherit Adam's sin and not Solomon's wealth? Okay. <laughs> Because we are all physically related to Adam and not to Solomon. Adam and Eve started the human race. Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, Adam, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned. And that's Romans 5.12. It is like leaving a weed in a beautiful garden, seeing a beautiful garden and leaving a weed in there without uprooting it, without yanking it out. Within a short time, you will see what one little harmless weed could do to the surrounding plants. And within a longer time, you will see no longer a beautiful garden, but a plant cemetery. For those who think we did not inherit Adam's sin, Nature. Look at what the Old Testament tells us of our sinfulness. Job said when he and when he saw God, he said in in Job forty verse three and four, "Behold, I'm vile. What shall I answer you? I will lay my hand over my mouth." Job recognized his vileness in the presence of God. It's the psalmist, um, David. Psalms 14, verse 1 to 3, he says, The fool have said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupted. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understands, who seeks God. They are all turned aside. They have altogether become corrupt. There is none that does good. No, not one. Psalms 51 verse 5, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Ezekiel 7.20, For there is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. Isaiah 53 verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned aside every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And in Isaiah 64 verse 6, but we are all like an unclean thing, and all unrighteous, and our, our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquity, like the wind, have taken us away. Oh, we have a sinful nature. That is guaranteed. The Bible is sure of it. Let's play another song. I'm tired and I'm so weary, but I must go on till the Lord comes and calls me away to where the morning is bright and the lamb is the and the night is as bright as the day yes. There will be peace in the valley for me someday There will be peace in the valley for me Sadness, no sorrow, my Lord, and no trouble. I'll see there'll be peace in the valley for me. The bear will be gentle 
And the lion shall be tamed And the wolves will lay down By the fold And the beast from the wild Will be laid by a child And I'll be changed from this creature That I am There will be peace in the valley For me someday There will be peace in the valley for me. Oh, Lord, I pray. There'll be no sadness, no sorrow, my Lord, and no trouble. I'll see there'll be peace in the valley. There will be peace in the valley for you and for me if we're in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. One verse that came to my mind right now is 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2. For he says, I've given you an ear to um, to you at a good time, and I have been your helper in the day of salvation. See, now is the good time. Now is the day of salvation. That's 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2. Now is the time of salvation. Now is the time to seek the Lord while He may be found. We can't wait too long because we never know about tomorrow. As um, <clears throat> as I was walking in the street, the Lord hit my heart and said, go touch and, t- and talk to this drug dealer right there. And I go up to him and, and, I, and I start witnessing to him. And at that same moment, I start witnessing a car crash happens. And I said, you see, in a moment, in an instant, that could be you. You don't know about tomorrow. You don't even know what could happen to you tonight. You need to receive Christ now. Um, he did not receive Christ, but he said that he was going to come to church this Sunday. And he wants me to pick him up. So we'll see what happens there. Um, so I know where he sells, so I'm going to go to the drug corner and I'm going to pick him up, him and his cousin. Okay, let's see what happens. Anyway, let's continue. Let's go to um, another question. And the question is, why did God... I already read that one. Okay, answer this one. The following question. What happened to the Ark of the Covenant? God said in Jeremiah that he was to do away with it. That's the answer of the Ark of the Covenant. Someone asked the question, what what happened to the Ark of the Covenant? God said in Jeremiah that he would do away with the Ark of the Covenant. Jeremiah 3.16. Then it shall come to pass when you are multiplied and increased in the land in those days, says the Lord, that they will say no more the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. It shall not come to mind, nor shall it, ye remember it, nor shall they visit it, nor shall it be made any more. After the destruction of Jerusalem, we do not see it mentioned again as being in the second temple. There is a statement in Revelation 11 of the Ark of His Covenant being seen in the sky, but I don't see it as the Ark of the Covenant. But I believe it is speaking about Jesus being seen in the sky, for he is the new covenant and the old soon to be no more. We read Revelation 11 verse 19. Then the temple of God was open in heaven and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there was lightning, noises, thundering and earthquake and great hail. Luke 22 verse 20 says, and he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Hebrews 8 verse 13 says, And speaking of a new covenant, he has made the first one obsolete, 
and what is obsolete and growing old will soon disappear. Now, someone asks another question, which we'll answer after another song. And that question is, Solomon has 700 wives and 300 concubines. What are their names, and is there no record of their names? We'll answer that question after this song. Let's go to our next song. Hallelujah. Um, well, boys. Anyway, <laughs> um, I want you guys to hear a commercial which I made. And you ask me if it sounds anything good. You tell me if it is any good. Um, email me and give me your opinion on it. Um, it's just to advertise my program. Um, I'm going to sh- put the commercial. And then we're going to afterwards answer the question you tell me if this commercial is any good hello my name is mr kakalides from the mr kakalides and the bible podcast i'm here to tell you about my podcast where you will find bible studies testimonies answers to your questions concerning the bible old-time christian music and a bible scholar who knows how to get in the nitty-gritty of the word and if you have any questions or you need prayer, you could email me at revkakalidis at gmail.com. Remember the podcast, Mr. Kakalidis and the Bible Podcast. So what is your opinion on this commercial? Uh, i giving you the commercial that I paid $100 for it to be advertised for this whole week. Um, actually, probably starting Monday of next week. Um, is it any good? Do I sound good? Do I sound convincing? Um, you let me know. Send me an email at revkakalidi at gmail.com. And also, if you do need prayer or you do have a Bible question, please email me. Or if you know my Instagram, Harris Kakalidis, or if you know 
my YouTube channel, Harris Capilides. Um, send me an email. I think it's better email because I have some accounts like Instagram. I have one account in, in, in Instagram that I can't get back there. They locked me out. And I have <laughs> in YouTube, I have some accounts that I'm locked out. But the one with the most sermons, I'm, I'm there, you know. Um, but anyway, I think it's better for you just to email me at revcacolides at gmail.com. Um, and ask me a question or ask, or if you have any prayer requests, I'm here to pray for you. Uh, I can either do it in the program or do it privately. You tell me. Anyway, let's go to the question that was asked. The question was about Solomon. It was Solomon. Solomon has 700 wives and 300 concubines. What are their names? And is there no record of their names? The Bible mentions one of them by name, and that is Nama, the mother of Rehoabam. In 1 Kings 14.31, So Rehoabam rested with his father, fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. His mother's name was Nama. And Ammonites. Then Abiham, his son, reigned in his place. The daughter of Pharaoh is not mentioned by name. Why do you want their names? Why not their phone numbers? Solomon is dead, and they've been dead. You have no chance, buddy. Who cares what their names were? They led Solomon away from serving the Lord. We read in 1 Kings 11, verse 1 to 4 says, But King Solomon loved many foreign women as well as the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, Hittites, from the nations of whom the Lord said, has said to the children of Israel, you shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. Surely they will turn away your hearts after, uh, after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love, and he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turn away his wife, his heart. His wives turn away his heart, for it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God as was the heart of his father David. That's 1 Kings 1 to 4. 1 Kings 11, 1 to 4. 1 Kings 11, 1 to 4. And with this, I believe we're done for today. Continue listening to this program of Mr. Kakalides and the Bible. God bless you, love you all, and I'll see you in the next program of Mr. Kakalides and the Bible where we'll continue answering your questions on the Bible, praying for you if you need prayer. Let's say a prayer before we end. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray for those who are here in this program. Let's play, pray for this program. Let's pray for, for our nation. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray for everyone, Lord God, as he listen to this program, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God. Bless them with an understanding of your word, Lord God. Bless them spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally. Lord God, you know their need, Lord God. Supply according to your riches and glory. <clears throat> Break every shame, every bond, every yoke. If they need healing, Lord God, we pray for healing. We pray for restoration. We pray for strength, Lord God. And we pray for this nation, Lord God. This nation that has gone <laughs> downward, Lord God, is no longer the nation that other nations look up to, Lord God. Lord God, give us godly leaders, leaders that love you, leaders that, that call upon your name, leaders that honor your word more than their position. We pray that in Jesus' mighty name. And we also pray for this podcast, Lord God. Lord God, that you will bless it, Lord God. That you will use it as an instrument to touch people's lives where they are at. Use it. Use it grand, Lord God. And bless those, Lord God, who are investing in this program, Lord God. Bless those who are hearing this program, who are downloading this program, who wants to see this program prosper. Bless them, Lord God, so they can continue blessing this program in downloading it and hearing it. 
And may this program be a great blessing in many people's lives, Lord God. I pray that that it will be a great blessing, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you for everything that you're going to do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Fill people with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord bless you all. Bye.